Hello everyone, this is Reza and welcome to another video of FX series in Maya. In this video, we're going to learn how to use nCloth system to generate realistic cloth behavior for our character. Now in this scene, I have a simple character and it just goes through an act. It's a mocap with the rig and the rig has been skinned to a geometry, nothing too special. Now, before we put the end cloth in, I just want to walk you through the rules and guidelines and how to prepare for the scene. Now, I've prepared the clothes in Marvelous Designer, but feel free to just extrude from the geometry and retopologize. With this, it comes with side pockets and everything is ready to go. As you can see, the character is rather massive each unit is one meter in marvelous and um, i can deal with that in maya when we apply and cloth simulation but just so you know that was my way of creating cloth for my character now when you export this into maya this would be the type of topology that you receive so it's rather horrendous it's not really working for us. And to be honest with you, if you want to start with this, it is almost impossible to get it right with nCloth. So what I had to do, I had to retopologize this and convert this to evenly spaced quads. And there are a number of ways you can do that. You can use topology tool in Modbox. You can use topology tool here in Maya. We can remesh and then retopologize, or you can use Z remesher in ZBrush, and that was the method I used to cl create clean geometry. And here's the clean geometry that I managed to create. Now it is really, really important to have quads and not n-gons in your scene. If I, cl if I zoom in, you can see I have side pockets. And if I, I isolate trousers, you can see those side pockets. I can actually look into it. And these are all holes. Now, for end cloth, that is a problem. So let's... Um, I think it's a good time for me to talk about guidelines and rules on what NCloth expects to receive as a clean geometry and only then it behaves as it should be. First rule is you need to have quads. So you can get away with few triangles. As a, as a matter of fact, I do have few triangles under the armpit and few areas, but too many triangles again will result in really bizarre deformation. The second rule is it needs to be single sided. You can have double sided geometry, but out of that, you need to create a single sided geometry. And when you finish your end cloth simulation, you just wrap it to your high resolution mesh and you take it from there. But for the sake of simplicity, I've started with single sided and it, it just gets the job done. And last but not least, you need to make sure you've got no non-manifold geometry. This means that if I go to mesh and clean up option box and enable non-manifold geometry faces with holes and concave faces, if I press clean up, I should not receive any errors. While you're at it, if you have any n-gons, convert them to quads using multi-cut tool in Maya. I've also gone ahead and UV'd everything nicely. I did the same thing for the trousers. I also, now let's go back to our character and export this to our animation scene. Now here's the character. 
and I simply imported the trousers and the shirt into the scene. What I did with the trousers, I sealed all the holes. So I closed the pockets, I closed the zipper, and any other areas that can cause us headache. I did the same thing for the shirts. Another thing I did, I gave myself 50 frames as a pre-roll. Now you cannot start simulating from frame zero because the cloth needs time to settle. Usually somewhere between 50 to 25 would be a good number. So if I click on the character and scrub through, you can see from minus 50 to minus 25, the character doesn't move at all. Now from minus 25 to frame zero, it comes to original position and only from frame zero, the character does the act. So I'm just going to switch back to minus 50. Also, I need to make sure that from my end cloth, under time slider preferences, playback speak is set to play every frame. So end cloth can actually simulate every single frame or calculate every single frame. All right, with this, we are ready to go. What I don't want to do is to simulate the actual geometry that I have on my character and use this geometry as my collider. I would like to create a duplicate of these models so everything is nicely preserved and any other extra calculation that I have can be applied to the duplicated mesh. Before I do that, I'm just going to go and expand my character, select my rig, press Ctrl G on it, and put it in a nice group node with clean transformation node. Then I'm going to select character and the clothes and press Ctrl G on that as well. Just gonna call this car underscore grp and I make sure I won't touch that or apply any nucleus node or cloth simulation node on that so this needs to be completely clean you will see the benefit of that shortly now it's time to bind everything into the character so I can just duplicate a copy knowing that they all follow the same movement. I'm just going to go and expand my character. Shift click on that plus sign to reveal every single bone in this rig. Then I'm going to select the hip, scroll down, shift select the very last joint, which is right toe end. With that, I'm going to control select the shirt and trousers. I'm going to go to rigging menu set. I'm going to go to skin, bind skin, reset the tool, and just go bind selected joints. Now, if I scroll, everything moves with the character. Just going to go and hide the joints. That's good. Time to duplicate them. I'm just going to collapse the character, select John Doe, press Ctrl D and Shift P to drop it out of the character node. Then I'm going to select the trousers and shirt, Ctrl D, Shift P. Excellent. Now they all have locked transformation because they were skinned to the character originally until I duplicated them. So with all three selected, I'm going to go and select them all, right click on it and go unlock 
selected. I don't want any deformation to be locked. Now these are going to be the guys that I'm going to work with for my ink cloth solution, not the original character group. You may want to have other things in the original character group, including props, assets, and you don't want additional extra nodes on them. Instead, you want to work with clean geometry with no interference or no additional calculation on already skinned geometry. Perfect. I'm just going to select them all, put them into a group and call them blend shapes. We are eventually going to blend shape them to the original character and original shirt and trousers. It's going to call this John Doe underscore blend shape. Again, naming convention is really important for me. And I do spend the time to rename every node. Shirt blend shape, trousers blend shape. Now it's time to simply connect the skinned geometry to the blend shape. Right now, if I were to hide my character, there is absolutely no animation in here and I do need the animation with correct deformation on my blend shape notes. So let's do that. I'm just going to expand the character group node. Select the John Doe body. Control select the John Doe body blend shape. I go to animation. Deform blend shape. I'm not going to go to option box. Really, there is not much for us to change. I'm just going to go and work with the default. I'm going to go ahead and create. On the right hand side, in the blend shape node, I'm just going to enable John Doe body blend shape weighting to one. So blend shape actually works. And I'm going to do the same thing with the shirt for the rigged character, select the shirt, control select, shirt, blend shape, deform, blend shape, go to blend shape, input node, and enable its weighting, trousers, control select trousers, blend shape, deform, blend shape, you can also press G to repeat the last tool. Now if I go ahead, and hide character group node and only look at my blend shape, I can actually see things are moving. Now that would be the geometry that I apply ink cloth to, not the original scene. I've already gone ahead and hit the character group node. I really don't need to manipulate it or modify it by accident. So it's hidden now. Great. Now I'm in a good place to start with end cloth simulation. So I'm just going to save the scene. And next would be for me to add end cloth to the trousers. Once that's done, I'm just going to apply end cloth to the shirt and we simulate everything together. We clean up the scene and pretty much finish. Since I'm going to just focus on the trousers, I don't need to see the shirt. So I'm just going to go ahead, press hatch on it to hide it for now. And well, let's go to effects and cloth and create a, an end cloth. Now, as soon as you do that, you can see Maya is creating two separate nodes. One is my end cloth node and the other one is nucleus. Now nucleus is a general solver and particle and cloth and in hair are actually using this new node to solve the simulation. It's the heart and the brain of your simulation and your end dynamics won't work unless you have nucleus node enabled. We have end cloth as well. And this end cloth node is in charge of the overall behavior of the cloth or the fabric. 
Now, since we since we are going to turn more than one polygon geometry into an ink cloth, it is important for me to name this so I know exactly what I'm dealing with. So this one is ink cloth trousers. For nucleus, I don't need to rename it because I'm just going to go with only one nucleus node for the entire scene. Now, just very quickly, if I select my end cloth node and go to Windows and Node Editor and expand the nodes, it is really remarkable to see that every single joint that I have in the scene will go to a skin cluster and to its shape node. And then we made a blend shape and connected this shape node to our blend shape shape node and then we created an end cloth out of it and the nucleus and end cloth always go together hand in hand and out of that we have the output mesh node it is really important to acknowledge that this node exists because we don't we no longer look at shirt blend shape node we're actually looking at the output cloth mesh node so this mesh that we see is no longer shirt blend shape node it is actually output cloth mesh node if you want to bring back the original node you can just simply go and display input mesh to bring back the original mesh but there is no simulation on it, so if you bring it in, you won't simply see any movement. All right, I hope it made sense. Let's go and press Control A to go to Attribute Editor and go and select the end cloth. And let's see what we're working with. We basically have two very important rollout that we constantly go back and forth and tweak in our end cloth node one is collision and the other one is dynamic properties when you actually specify what exactly what type of behavior you expect from that cloth in our nucleus node we have three rollouts that are very very important the first one is force field the second one is the quality of your end cloth, which is solver attribute. And the third one is scene attribute, which is in charge of the scale of your scene. And very similar to other dynamic behaviors in Maya, scene scale is very, very important. We'll get to that in a second. For now, I'm just going to select my end cloth node and I'm going to start with a descent preset and go to preset and apply t-shirt. Now this gives me a relatively good starting point. Obviously a lot needs to be tweaked, but for now um, I think it gives me a good starting point to begin with. Now I'm gonna go and select my nucleus node and for now I am going to increase my sub steps to 10 and 12. 3 and 4 are just simply way too low to simulate anything. One thing I forgot to do actually is to go to my nucleus into time attribute and my start frame is not frame 1, my start frame is minus 50. So I'm just going to quickly put in minus 50 in there. Also, another thing that I need to be mindful of is right now there is no collision object. So this trousers um, cannot collide with anything. It's just going to fall down. So I'm going to select my John Doe character and I'm going to go to end cloth and make that a collider through create passive collider. In the option box, it acknowledges that I'm using this Nucleus 1 node and I'm going to go make collide. Now with these two changes, I can now go ahead and do a play blast. To create a play blast, I prefer not to just play blast the scene, 
but first in cache the scene and only then I go through a quick preview. So with the geometry selected, when we uh, I'm in effects menu set, I'm going to go to in cache, create a new cache, in object, option box. I'm going to in cache the entire scene using cache frame range to time slider and go create. All right, let's play. Well, as you can see, I would call this a true disaster. So the trousers are falling down um, and the cloth is actually coming out of the body. So nothing is working, but one thing actually works and that is the collider. So that part of it I'm quite happy about but the behavior of the cloth is very, very erratic and unexpected. So let's um, close that. I'm going to go back to frame one. Let's select the pans, go to collision solver display, and I'm going to enable collision thickness. I wanna see how thick the cloth is when it comes to collision. Well, this is way too thick. I'm just going to reduce this to probably 0 0.025. That's much better. I'm going to switch back to off. And I'm going to check the same thing for the body. I'm going to go to collision thickness. And again, I have thickness to 0.5 and I think it's way too high I'm gonna change this to 0 0.05 and off now it's time to put in some constraints so the pants won't fall down and the clothes stays put at least uh, it's absolutely important for end cloth simulation to um, have correct constraints in place. And the constraints that I use for end cloth is point to surface. So I'm gonna select the first two rows, control right click, two vertices, two vertices, or you can go ahead and select them manually. So you select the points, shift select the collider, go to end constraint, point to surface. We are going to have a lot of constraints, so I might as well go ahead and name them as we go. I'm going to call this trousers, top, copy the name. Then I'm going to go down in here, go to edge, select the first one, select the second loop, first loop, second loop, control right click, two vertex, two vertex. Select my collider and end constraint point to surface. I'm just going to rename this one too. Again, names don't need to really make sense as long as it makes sense to you. Now, one good checkbox that I really use in my constraints, if I select my constraint and go to my attribute editor, is that exclude collision it kind of pushes out any geo inner penetration and uh, i found this actually quite helpful so i'm just going to select the constraints on both constraints and i'm going to tick that checkbox under strength drop off rollout also i noticed that the the trousers do drop down right at the beginning simply because uh, the material is not rigid enough for lack of better word and this is something that you need to always change in your end cloth. So first things first, I'm just going to reduce the friction to 0.1. I found the default value is always too high. Now, if you found that you, the pants or the clothes are actually going up and down like a spring, then stretch resistant and compression resistant is the one to change. 
Um, I'm going to start with stretch resistance of 80 and compression resistance of 20. If you double this, double the next one as well. These two usually work hand in hand. And I'm going to reduce my bend resistance a little so I get more pleasing lines on my cloth. Um, I try not to touch rigidity and any restitution angle or tension since these are for hard surface objects. So never um, alter them on a when you're working on a character's clothes. I'm going to go all the way down into damp. I found the overall default value is always way too high. So I'm just going to reduce it to something like 0.4 and um, mass, I want to have a slightly heavier cloth, so I'm gonna increase the 0.6 to 0.8. Now, before we make too many changes, let's um, encache this again. So I'm just going to encache and delete the existing cache. All right, we're back. Now you can see with only few changes we made, we see dramatic improvement on the look of our simulation. We have some geo inner penetration and that sub step issue simply because Maya cannot catch up with the amount of simulation that is happening so rapidly. So we need to increase the sub steps, that's for sure. But I'm really, really pleased with the result I think we need to a little bit work on these areas um, and we're almost there. There are few tweaks and enhancement in the quality of the simulation is needed. But apart from that, I'm actually fairly pleased with the result. So let's go ahead and make those changes. Now I want to make these areas a bit tighter. So the way you do that and the way you partially have an impact or effect as a region of your um, geometry or your end cloth is through painting and you do that a lot we every time you use end cloth you need to know how to paint a specific attribute on the model now the attribute i want to target is rest length scale i want to reduce it to something like 0.9 but not on the entire model only on these areas so I'm going to right click, go to paint, end cloth, vertex, and rest length scale. I'm going to double click on my tool settings with the ramp enabled. I'm going to go to replace and probably use a value like 0.9. I'm going to zoom in and just paint these areas. So this 0.9 for rest scale only affects this area. I'm going to go switch to smooth and flood everything a couple of times. So the overall influence is smooth enough. Okay, that's done. Also, I'm going to go to quality settings. And this max self collide iterations, I'm going to increase it to eight. It helps with the collision and the artifact that I'm getting. I'm going to scroll down and enable trap check on the model and increase the push out to something like 0.1. So it pushes out any cloth that has been trapped into the model. I found this actually very, very useful. And I feel like I still need to reduce the damp. Not much is happening. So I'm just going to reduce the damp to 0.2 and see what I'm getting. Now it's time for me to address also a very, very important aspect of my simulation. And that is my space scale. As you can see, I have my measures here. And this guy is 182 centimeters tall which is somewhat realistic. What Maya calculates is every unit is one 
meter. This means that this character is 182 meters, which is just massive. I'm just going to use 0.25 for now and see how we go. And that should help us with the movement of my simulation. And into sub steps. And let's uh, crank up the number to something like 30 and 35. Now I'm going to delete the old cache, and cache it again and do another play blast and we'll be back. All right, let's play. Fantastic. Reducing scene scale and increasing substep truly works. So you need to really constantly be mindful of the scale of your scene and make sure that the, um, the resolution that you have matches the movement of the character. I'm actually fairly happy with what I have. So I'm going to save this scene and export this geometry as an Alembic. The way to do that is to go to cache with the model selected, go to Alembic cache and export selection to Alembic. I'm going to make sure that right color set is enabled and UV right is enabled as well. And I'm just going to call this trousers version two and go export. Now I'm going to hide the trousers and I'm going to hide my end cloth and go ahead and deactivate it. I'm going to do the same thing for my constraints. I'm going to go ahead and deactivate them. Now it's time to bring the shirt and I'm going to go ahead and import the Alembic. So I'm going to go to cache, Alembic pack, cache, and import the trousers. Just going to give this a shader. It really doesn't matter what color, but I'm just going to go ahead and give it this color for now. Now, the reason I'm doing this to, is to create that extra level of collision between the shirt and the pants. One way of doing this is to simulate both of these objects at the same time, but I found that much easier and, and more straightforward to just bring this as an Alembic, turn it to a collider, and then create that natural behavior. Now with this pan selected, I'm just going to go to in cloth and just convert it to a passive collider. And I'm just going to call this trousers. Now I'm going to se select the shirt and turn that to an in cloth. Go to option box, make sure nucleus is selected and rename it to shirt. I can go ahead and turn off constraints for the trousers as well. We don't need them anymore. Now I'm pretty much going to do the same thing for the shirt. So it should be much faster for you guys to just go ahead and rinse and repeat. First things first, with the end cloth node selected, I'm going to choose t-shirt preset. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and apply my constraints. Now for the geometry itself, I know for a fact that because of the scale of my scene, uh, stretch resistant and bend resistant need tweaking. Without even doing a play blast, I'm going to go ahead and change them. I'm just going to set my stretch resistance to something like 40 and compression resistant to 15, bend resistant to the same amount that I did for the trousers. 
Now I need to do one thing, then that thing is new. And we didn't do that in, in the trousers. And I need to make sure that this area uh, is not going to deform too severely, since usually this area in, in the cloth is rather rigid. Again, I need to paint that because it's just a region that I want to have an impact on. Now, the attribute I want to target is input mesh attract. So I want this area to get attracted to the base mesh, not the simulation mesh. I'm just going to go to paint vertex map and target input attract. Go and go to replace probably 0.7 and zoom in a little. Set it to smooth and smooth it out. While I'm having this, I'm just going to do the same thing for the sleeves as well. All right. Excellent. I'm going to go and select my end cloth shirt and reduce the mass to 0.2 and damp to 0.3 simply because it's a big ginormous cloth and I want to have a little bit of interaction and movement not not to have it too rigid. Again, that's just not going to be too realistic. Best, best thing to do is to study references and see how cloth behaves in certain speed and certain movements. Now, I think I'm in a good place to end cache this and do a play blast and see how it looks. All right, we're back. Let's play and see what we have. Perfect. I actually quite like the the form of the wrinkles and the behavior of the cloth. Let's have a look at it from back. I was a bit concerned about the armpit, but it actually works rather beautifully. I'm going to press three to go to smooth mode and it looks really good. There's a little bit of geo inner penetration here. But we can just fix that with a good old shape editor. We can just blend shape it in. And to be honest with you, with motion blur, it's not really that big of a deal. So I actually quite like this. This artifact here is just normals that we need to fix. Select those faces and go reverse normal. But apart from that, it actually looks pretty good. Now this area, the cloth bunches up. So we may want to use that um, rest length attribute and paint a little bit of rest length attribute in here. So this area gets a bit shorter. Just going to set it to 8.5. And I'm going to just paint that area. I'm going to go to smooth, flood, go back. And one more thing that I would like to do is just to paint dampening as well. So I'm just going to go to vertex, damp. And 8.5 is a good value. Good. Then I'm going to go to smooth and flood it a couple of times. So it's smooth enough. Fantastic. 
let's check our sub steps 30 and 35 sounds good I'm going to end cache it and I'm going to export it as a limbic also I'm gonna select this guy and export it as a limbic and bring them all into a brand new scene so our brand new scene is going to have three limbic files no extra calculation in there um, no skin influences no nucleus node evaluation no constraint calculation so it's going to be very fast to render very fast to calculate very fast to preview all right we're finally there here i am in the master shot i've gone ahead and imported three olympic files that i had the trouser the shirt and the character as you can see there is no skeleton there is no skin binding there is no nucleus calculation the scene is clean and pretty fast actually so um it's time to dress the set, time to bring in assets, the environment into the master shot. I've already done that. So I have a few props to work with and a grand plane. Uh, I've already textured everything. I've already put some lights in. As you can see, if I go to show lights, I have a fairly simple scene, so nothing too complex. And I have a camera. Just before I play, there's another video that I go through basic end cloth nodes. If you found some parts of the video a bit too difficult to understand, I highly encourage you to watch that video too. As in that video, I go through all the basics of end cloth. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and render the scene and we'll be back in a second. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you very much for tuning in and see you in the next one.